So, hello everybody. Uh, are we online? I'm fixing my mug. Oh, oh, there you are. Hello, it's Coco's birthday. Hello, hello, hello. My God, that was very RuPaul. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I hope, okay, we got one viewer, <laughs> one person joining the Coco party, four people joining the Coco party. I don't see one single chat, five people joining the Coco party. This is going quick. Where are the chats? I can't see them. Oh, God, this is so frustrating. They're on the side of, are you looking at, are you looking on your um, computer? Yes. They're on the side. I don't see anything. <laughs> this is so dramatic. Where are my chats? How can I access them? 11 viewers. Hi, everybody. And not a chat available. Oh, this is so frustrating. Okay. Okay, well, Emilio says, I got a notification. Uh, Rogelio says, hello, Jacob uh, Lanier. Sebastiano says, <laughs> hi, Brazil. Hi, from, hi to Brazil. Hi to everybody, guys. I'm virtually with Lanyer, Lanyer Smith from Sense Memory, guys. Lanyer is on this gadget. If somebody yeah. knows how to let me connect the camera from Lanyer to my YouTube feed, please let us know because it's not working for us today. The Coco Spirits are, it's a conspiracy against us. But anyway, I have Lanyers with us right here. <laughs> Lanyer is here with us in in virtual spirit. Wait, Lanyer, hello, you can everybody. wait. Say say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. That's Lanyer talking, and I don't see a single chat. I don't know why, guys. If I write hi, do you see my chat? Turn that around. Turn that around. We can't see if you showed us the back. Yeah, but I don't see your picture. I just see your username. Wait, okay, well then do a video. Turn on your camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, we're turning. Ah, there he is. So now, how do I, okay. So guys, there you go. <laughs> is this how we're going to do it? Ah, right, look, I'm Landier. <laughs> so hi, everybody. <laughs> How are we going to do this? Look, I'm moving. This is like an episode for Modern Family. I'm Phil. <laughs> wait. <laughs> no, what are we going to... Oh, wait. Hmm. I, why, why do I have... Why do I have... Did you do that? <laughs> Guys, I don't see the chat. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I, I think Coco is messing with us. No, I'm telling you. <laughs> I just added up some freaking emojis to the whole equation. Guys, this is a mess. I don't see the chat. You should, you should hang me on the wall behind you so that we can... <laughs> Next time you put me on a on a um 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 what are those an easel behind you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lanier Smith. Okay, well, um, if anybody knows, okay, Lanier can read the chat. I can't. Okay. If if anybody knows how I can turn on the chat on my freaking gadget here, then let me know. Does anybody see my chat? Because I'm writing, I wrote hi. I'm going to write hi again. And I'm writing, but no, I can't see any answers. Melinda Cooper says she's cracking up. Love Susan, who I am, and is drinking some kind of French wine. Uh, happy birthday to the Queen Coco from Hugo. Emilio, ah ha ha, oh you guys. I'm, freak, I'm freaking loving this. Well, we're a hit. <laughs> we're a hit and like nothing is working and we're here celebrating well, Coco's I don't, I don't see your, anything that you typed in there really? 
Okay, you know what I I is gonna do? No, I can't do nothing really. Um, darn. Wait, no, you know what? Um, okay, no, you know what? I have here the live. Yes, I, I have a way. I have a way. Let me just turn off this. I see you guys. I found a way. Yay. Okay. Uh, Hugo, we can't see anything. What? Why? I can see something. Sebastiao. Hi, Emilio. Love is who I am. Moderator Lanyard. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> um, okay, let me shift this. Okay, guys, I have the stream. Thank God. Okay, we're, we're slowly getting there. Now, if we could only figure out how to get Lanyard in. Well, I mean, he's there. But if he could be more there. <laughs> you know something. I just have to say something. I now know more about the the bunker than anybody else except who's been there in person. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. On a crutch. It's, this quite, is... it's really glamorous. Yeah, wait, let me cover it up. It's all a mess here. No, 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 don't cover it up. I won't, my lips are sealed. No, because if I, t I keep touching the screen and then I flip to my camera. <laughs> like that. I love the light. Oh, look at the lights. That, that'll that's one of the secrets it's good lighting good lighting is always secret and makeup guys okay so wait uh guys hi f Cotti, hi guys hello hello melinda cooper a little black dress of course i'm i'm wearing red with blue wear my shoulder going on there <laughs> guys listen lanyard and i were talking and debating oh <laughs> drinks uh uh, hi, Mila Ruiz. Uh, yes, Melinda, love is who I am. Okay, guys. So Lani and I were debating something. I wanted to teach you something special. You know that it's Coco Chanel's birthday today. And, um, <laughs> okay, there's somebody else here on the side we're going to talk about. Um, Lani, it's actually really cute to have you in a little bubble. You're like a Tamagotchi. You know, <laughs> feed me, feed me. Wait, here. <laughs> We're going to give Lanyard, Lanyard, I'm going to feed you, Gabrielle. Look, 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 look. <laughs> All right. This, this is the deal. We were debating something. I came across a certain numerology pattern. Now, follow me if you may. For, guys, let's get ready for a little ritual here. Um, this is a ritual for who, and I'm telling you guys, who, who has Chanel number 19? It doesn't matter what concentration you have. You could, you could take Chanel number 19. Lanyard has it, the pure parfum. I have the eau de toilette. I know that Emilio has several concentrations, but he loves the eau de parfum. So Emilio can take the eau de parfum. I have the, here a huge bottle of the, this one's really vintage. This is a 30 milliliter. So, Get ready while I'm talking. Get your number 19s out. Because it's Chanel's birthday. It's the 19th of August. And we know that this perfume is, was developed as her birthday date. Uh, it was one of the last fragrances released during Chanel's lifetime. So she did smell this one and she did use this one from time to time. But I digress. Or I don't. Now get your number 19s ready. And here is the twist. Get your number 18 right. I know a lot of you don't have the number 18, but who has the 18, get it out. Uh, and if you, Emilio, are we doing some satanic rituals? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's some cocoa rituals. So we're going to, okay, oh, number 18. So, okay, guys, follow me here. Let me see. I'm going to hold out all these. Now we're going to get to numerology. Even if you don't have the perfumes, don't matter. But if you do, better, because we're going to use them. First of all, number 19. If you have number 19, spray it on now. Let me just put Lanyard down for a second and spray it on. I'm going to spray my number 19. I did it three times. You can do, I don't know, twice, one or whatever. I got my number 19. Okay, now, be, now this is the deal. Smell it, guys. We're smelling. This is odorama through the computers. Vam, vam, vam. We're sending the... Hmm. Now, numerology tells us what? Number 19 is 
number one plus number nine added up together gives us a ten. Ten is one plus zero, so it's one. One is the number of birth, initiation, beginning. We are beginning with something new. It is the birth. Well, now my researches have led me to a further conclusion. By accident, merely by accident, uh, a couple of days ago, being as obsessed with perfumes as I am, I forgot that I sprayed number 19 on my arm. <laughs> oh, cheers, sweetie. <laughs> cheers, sweetie. <laughs> Are you allergic to your own perfume? <laughs> I <laughs> oh, forgot you were on camera. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> it's the emotion. It's the emotion. Oh, this is, I'm so, I'm getting all red, guys. All right. So I sprayed, so I sprayed number 18 on my arm. So by accident, after doing the 19. And I'm going to do it now. So whoever has it whatever imagine spraying it i'm gonna put lanyard down for a second so we're doing number 18 now right? now we're doing number 18 guys important is do the same amount or a bit less than number 19. so i did three sprays of 19 so i'm gonna do 18 maybe two sprays and a half yeah two is enough oh that's great i'm telling you lanyard okay guys listen now we have 18 and 19. I said that 19 adds up to be 1. 1 plus 9 is 10. 10 is 1 plus 0 is 1. Number 18, now keep that 1 in mind, number 1. Number 18 is 1 plus 8. That gives us a 9. Add that 9 to the 1 that we had from number 19. That's 10. 10, once again, is 1 plus 0. It's 1. The unity of these two of number 18 and number 19 adds up to be the true birth of a Chanel fragrance. And let me tell you, we uh, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. It's so oh freaking God. amazing. Be three years to get through basic algebra, but this adds up. And, and Lanyard, and give it some time because number 18 is very brandy. It's very brandy heavy. It's very... You know, it begins very alcoholic, but give it time. When it settles into that slight, um, it's, it's already really gorgeous. Those two together, I don't know what to say, guys. To me, this is what Gabrielle should have been. <laughs> this is like, not this. It should have been. It's like the essence. It's the pure beginning. This is the beginning, guys. To me, this is the quintessential Chanel perfume. Number 19 mixed with 18. Purely from a numerological point of view perspective, it adds up to be one. Those two together add up to be one. And that's amazing. So, Lanyard, what do you think? We're going to let it dry down as we talk. It's already, it's just spectacular. It really is. I don't know if people can hear me, but boy, is it really wonderful. I think they can, but um, guys, can you hear Lanyard? Now I have both of our screens together. I can't, uh, oh, I can. <laughs> Is it safe to blow my nose again? Yeah, you have to blow your nose again. I don't know what to come up over me, but my nose is starting running. Are you emotional? Oh, you know what it is. What is it's it? Coco. She's, 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 she's doing the F word with me. Coco is doing the F word with you? <laughs> Wait, Lanya, I'm going to, I'm going to call you again. Give me a second. Okay. I'm calling you in a second. Having issues here with the, and we're ringing. Okay. Oh, fabulous. We got you. Okay. So what do you do it? It's a touch screen because I keep touching the screen and then like the camera disappears and then it doubles us up. So we're back. Okay. So what do you guys think? Has anybody, 
Peter Kerkorin, hi, Jacob. Hi, Lanyer. Oh, they say they can hear me. Good. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's the topic, guys? It's Chanel's birthday. We just mixed up this these incredible fragrances. Number 19. Oh my God, look how old this bottle is. This is a 30 milliliter bottle from eh, late 70s, early 80s. Oh, it's a beautiful bottle. Yeah, it's huge, but you see all the... Um, yeah, but that's, that's a, the, the, the patina of age. It really just shows you how loved it is. This and Vachetta leather, that's the same. <laughs> So, guys, that's the mix. I think this is a beautiful ritual of adding up to number one. If you can, hunt down number 18, Eau de Toilette, not Eau de Parfum. And then mix it with Chanel number 19. How is it, Lanny? How is it developing? It is just amazing. Isn't it special? You know, it, it's, it smells not of flowers or of, of um, herbs or anything. It smells of, like, skin... It's, it has a kind of sensual, almost um, um, moist skin kind of thing. I don't know if that's making any sense. <laughs> it does, it yeah. Smells, it's, it smells like someone you're in love with. You know how when you're in love and you just love the smell of someone's skin that you love and how that stays with you, like after they leave the bed, you may go back at two or three hours later and lay down on the bed and you can smell that in the sheets. This is really sexy. Well, there you go, guys. Lanyard just made us X-rated. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you get? Uh, that's what I get. It's, it's totally really sexy. It's very sexual. I want to kiss myself. <laughs> sure. Guys, first of all, before we get into kissing ourselves, I want to thank you, Lanyard, so much for joining because this is like such an honor for me to have Lanyard join the channel. And guys, by the way, we just... No, no, wait. Stop right there. The honor is all mine, Jacob. I mean, you are an amazing person, an amazing human being, a wonderful nose, a, a, great, a great spirit, and it just really touches me that I'm your friend um, and you're my friend. Okay. You're not going to make me cry. <laughs> I'm going to cry now. No. <laughs> That's why I have the handkerchief here. That's the handkerchief for the nose and the eyes. No, but guys, I mean, what can I say? You know I love Lanyard so much, but you got to, if you haven't checked out his channel yet, check him out. We started this uh, stream so quickly. I don't even know how to type in. After the stream is ready, I will type in the link to Lanyard's channel, but check out his channel. What is your channel exactly called on YouTube? It's not just Lanyard Smith. It's It's a different... What's the name of the YouTube oh, channel? Oh, Sense Memory. Sense Memory. So if they type in Sense Memory on YouTube, they find your channel. No, if they type in Lanier... Oh, wait, let me look. I have to look for myself. No, because I also forgot my channel. My channel isn't Super Deco. My channel is actually Watch Super Deco. And I'm like always like, oh, yeah, just look for what? Just look for Super Deco. And people are like, mm, we found you in other ways. but I can't even spell my own name. N-I-E-R. Yeah, you just type in Lanyard Smith and, and my picture will come up and it, it'll take you right there to my channel. So just uh, L-A-N-I-E-R-S-M-I-T-H. Perfect. Lanyard Smith. So go check him out and follow his channel. The most incredible perfume reviews ever. Now, oh. I did call you out on one thing, though. Yes, you did. <laughs> and that would be... Here. Oh. Uh, the Gabrielle review. Yeah. Um. Oh wait, what? Aunt DJ hundred eleven. No, it's not sense memory. It's sense sense. Yeah, not to be confused with um, the actor studio of Sense Memory, the uh, the uh, method acting, which is sense is in the senses, but sense is in fragrance. S C E N T. I can't even spell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's the point. Wait, I got all I'm these. I'm so excited to be on with you that I'm just like, everything's I'm so brain. excited too, guys. How tragically anti-technological we are. We, we spent like a couple of days planning this and we still didn't figure it out. This is the improvised. Hours before 
before we went on. We've been on with each other for hours trying to figure this thing out. We've been on for hours trying to figure this out, guys. And, well, we did. We did. Oh, BB says, Lanyar Smith sent memory. No, sent with an S. Yes. I'm going to type it in. Roge Ro Rogelio or Rogelio Garcia de Paredes. That's exactly correct. Sense memory. With an S. And um, so... Right, so now I was talking about Gabriel. No, we had an issue with Gabriel because, um, <laughs> because I, you should check out Lanier's review. I mean, he just like got Gabriel and he was able to get sitting around in a beautiful bucolic uh, atmosphere outside on the porch or on a lanai and, um, and they were testing it out all together. And of course, when it's a group of people testing together, you can't really just take over the round table. Everybody has to say what their opinion. But I had the feeling, it was mellow. The opinions were not, I, I had the feeling none of you was really like super excited about it once you smelled it. I mean, you were very respectful to it. It's really hard in, uh, when you, for me, when I first smell a fragrance, unless it's too fat, to, to really land right on exactly how I feel about it right out of the bottle, if that makes any sense. It takes time to really get to know a fragrance. So I did have reservations, and I was being polite. I, I do definitely have to do a, a serious, just me, review of Gabrielle and explore further. But yes, you were right. You did sense uh, um, that I was being polite. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were to smell it now, I don't know. Was that, do you have it, or did somebody else get it? I have it. Hold on. Discussing amongst yourself. Sent 007, love you both. Oh, we love you too, sweetie. Uh, Ray Ramili's, Hillary's face said it all in that Gabrielle video. <laughs> love is who I am. Gabrielle is like that tawdry neighbor who is fun to talk to, but you're not sure if you want to be her friend. The shade. <laughs> yeah, Hillary. Hillary just was right there saying, no, this isn't the right for me. She liked the other one that uh, was uh, given to me and that was an Ubigant Quelque Fleur something or other. I'll go find it. Well, no. I'll, I'll write it. I don't uh, see there I go. No, no, my brain's gone. <laughs> That's it. You, you need the sugar. <laughs> anyway, now people are seeing what, a, what an, a nut I am. <laughs> it's two nuts. It's two nuts in a screen. <laughs> and I haven't even had a martini. Oh, uh, oh, the drinks. It's uh, it's yeah, in the I, fridge. The champagne that. is in the. Fr I have no guys. I totally forgot. We're we're. I mean, it's 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 a brindisi. It's a toast to Chanel. I actually have. I was. Did you get? Do you have a drink? Because I have a champagne ready. Okay, I I have to run downstairs and get something really quick. So <laughs> you entertain them. You're gonna. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's a champagne. I got a miniature champagne, and I need a flute. Okay, so I have a moi at Chandon. There it is. It's a little miniature. I ain't gonna drink the whole thing alone, so I bought a little one. It's a mini moi. So this is my little uh, champagne for Coco's birthday. Welcome everybody to Coco. Well, this is super abstract. This is very Lynch here. We got all the photos and the paintings. Uh, the thin one over there, I think, is good. Thank you. Thank you, Lanyard. <laughs> He's actually in the room with me. Um, Melinda says she has champagne. Yes, darling. Rogelio or Rogelio. Uh, champagne cocktail, Lanyard's recipe. I know. I told Lanyard to do a recipe to prepare it for today. I mean, I just have champagne. I, I don't have nothing else in the house. I'm just like Edwina Monsoon from Abfab. I just have champagne, darling. But I don't really, I'm not a drinker, as you all know. Uh, I don't really drink much. But this is a special occasion, so I'm going to pop it open. And I don't know if Lanyard is going to pop open his bottle with us on camera or if he's going to arrive with a ready flute. But I think I need another glass. This one's dirty. <laughs> I need, a, I need to get another glass. Lanyard, sweetie darling, could you please pass me another glass? This one is totally dirty. It has some sugar in it. 
So anyways, I was saying, uh, no, but I need this shape. Oh, darn, whatever. We're going we're gonna to do the, the other one because that one's super dirty. All right, Ooh. dirty flute. Um, <clears throat> I'm still waiting for Lanyard to come back. And while we're waiting for Lanyard to come back, so it's Coco's birthday today. And it's a very important moment because, I mean, well, she's been dead for many years, 46 years already. She died in 1971. But we still celebrate her. So we have here my pouch protected. Let me open it up. And I'm going to put down this because Lanyard isn't back yet. So we're going to prepare properly. Whoever has a Chanel bag, get it out now. <laughs> we have the 255 bag. It needs to... Get some fresh air. Let's put it on while we're going to, you know, prepare the drink. I got this one on. Then, <laughs> what else? This is so, um, what else are we going to do? On DJ 111, I want a tour of Lanier's art. Well, we can ask him once he's back. He's still preparing the drink. I still haven't opened this. I'm waiting for Lanyard to come back before I pop this one. It's super cold. You can see. Oh! Okay, here I am. Wait, but so you're already cocktailing. I didn't open mine yet. Look. I can see that you have champagne. No, but it's still closed. I want to pop it open, like, together. So I put on the Chanel bag. Do you have any Chanel accessories you want to like kind of include in this? Yes, but let me pour my drink first. This is a this is a Vesper Martini. Oh, we know it's his Vesper. Sport gin, one part vodka and uh, half a part of Kina Lale, as introduced by Ian Fleming in the book Casino Royale, and by, as enjoyed by the beautiful Daniel Craig. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, not yet. Let me pop it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I put it back in the book. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to open my... Give me a second. Let me just pop it open. Okay. But uh, as I'm popping it open, and I... As I'm popping it open, I don't want to... Um, no, I wanted to say... Craig Daniel Craig is officially going to be in the next James Bond. It's official. He said he's going to be in the next one. Yeah, I read these going to two more. Oh, even oh, you got two. Okay, I got one, and I was like, okay, and you got okay, guys. I'm popping it open. Oh God, this always scares me. Here it goes. Here it goes. It's <laughs> well. Let's just say that this is. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Yay! Happy. 146th birthday, or I don't know which one it is. Is it 146? She, I mean, she's been around the block a couple of times. Yeah, she's, she, she was there before the block was built. Ooh. All right, guys, I got my champs. Y'all's got something to drink? Uh, mine too. You got to be of age, though. Okay, Lanyard, I'm going to look. I'm going to chin chin you like this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Chin chin. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, delish. Perfect. So good. Oh, it's so dry. Mine is very dry, too. Ooh. And I mean, I just had a cookie before we started. So I had like some sweet taste in my mouth. And now it, after a cookie, it ain't that goody because the cookie was so sweet. So it makes this even... See, you should be having a martini. That would go perfectly with a biscuit. Oh, I would love a martini. You know I love my dirty martinis, though. Yeah, there's nothing quite like a dirty martini. Uh, ooh. So what did I miss while I was gone? While you were gone, somebody was asking you to do a tour of your artworks in the background. Oh, okay. Of all that, of all the pieces we see in the background. All right. So, let's see. There is Daniel Craig. And I'm going to... Uh, that's a, that's a really, famous, uh, really, are we beginning with Daniel yeah. Craig? <laughs> yeah. A famous photograph of him by an artist, and she did 
nothing but men crying. So that's him crying. This is uh, Venice by uh, Claude Monet. These are two, I don't know what they are, <laughs> who did them, but they're beautiful. This is a, a Sargent painting, but a little secret about that is that uh, face is my face on there that a friend did for me and not the face of the original person who is in the painting. This is an I don't know what. That is a gift from uh, my brother and sister-in-law from, uh, I think it was uh, um, uh, Thailand. That's a half a century. This is a birthday card I got when I turned 50. And this is Rita Hayworth. This is a Michelangelo. This is a Michelangelo. This is Venice. I love Italy. Italy to me is like going home. And then these are some friends of mine who mm -hmm. lives in uh, Texas. This is my best friend, Lane, who's coming to visit tomorrow from San Francisco. This is my friend, Joe, who's also a very, very, very cool. That, that is Sissy from, from uh, Something's Burning. And this is my friend, Scott Patrick, who is a uh, makeup artist for Project Runway. This is uh, some, a bottle of Chanel number no. five that I got from some cheap a store. I can't remember the name of the store. This is my friend, Bryant Lanier, where, where, where my name comes from. That's Bryant. This is a photograph from Coco Avant Chanel. Um, this is to remember San Francisco. This is uh, one of my favorite artists uh, from the 50s. I can't remember his name at the moment. There we have Shirley MacLaine as Coco Chanel. This is Alain Delon and Romy Schneider. And these are two that I haven't put pictures in yet. And this is an ad for Yves Saint Laurent's Jazz. And then over here, we have uh, original, these are original photographs by Roddy McDowell of Elizabeth Taylor in 1964 and in the 90s. Uh, something from my family brought me from, from Thailand. This was a gift when I left floor design. This is um, Gary Cooper. That is um, Gilbert Rowland. And this is Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe from The Misfits. And that's it, I think. So I hope that answers your questions. Fabulous. Look, the comments are, Melinda says, amazing, Lanier. Emilio says, great photographs, Lanier. Uh, oh, thank you. And then people are congratulating Emilio's 21st birthday. Happy birthday, Emilio. Happy birthday, Emilio. Uh, on to DJ 111. Wow, your friend did that. How kind. I love Sergeant. Was that your friend? Yes, I have seen Love and the Devil. I love that film. That's a wonderful film. If you haven't seen it, Jacob, you should see Love and the Devil. It is the story of, of uh, Francis Bacon and his lover. It's a lover's quarrel. <laughs> Yeah, Ooh. yeah, absolutely. Guys, um, <clears throat> too much makeup as usual. Lanyard was like, oh, I didn't know you wore makeup. <laughs> well, right now it's melting, so I'm going to add some more. Look, I'm using this thing. It's the Le Blanc from, by Chanel, and it's, too, it's, it's the lightest color they have, literally. It's the number 10 beige from Japan. And it's still too dark. But since I'm very oily, we're going to do live makeup. Look at that. It's going to make me less oily in a second. I'm, I'm watching every moment of this so I can get some tips. <laughs> no, no good tips here. I'm no guru. I'm like the opposite of a makeup guru. I just like do this really quickly because I hate oily patches. But I get oily patches because girl got an oily face. What's she going to do? <laughs> this is what it is. 
Now it gets a little bit mattified, but then you see this is still two different colors, so I would have to do it on my next day. I could be, I can't be bothered, as Catherine Tate would say. Am I bothered? No. But um, what else we got Chanel-esque to celebrate this uh, this birthday? I um, was thinking of putting on this vintage 1994 or 1996. Give me a second. My earring, my favorite Chanel earring. I have two of them, but I only wear one usually. Because you're never whole when Chanel is not around. So you always only get one to wear. This little beauty here. Gold plated, little double C. Oh, it's falling off. It's kind of rare to get ear clips nowadays by Coco. Shave my hair. But there you go. We're going to, I feel like a Christmas tree. We're going to do that. Then we should add, this one I would add, but it's a bit complicated because I'm holding lanyard at the same time. And you, I'm just so glad you haven't dropped me yet. No, I'm not going to, I would never drop you, my dear. Are you kidding me? I would I would rather drop the the Chanel bracelet. Oh, probably. Yes. Sounds like this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Oh yes, fabulous. <laughs> so what do we have here? Comments. I wanted to get a Chanel foundation, and their shade range is very limited. Not POC friendly. What is POC? Amelia, you know I'm so people bad with color. abbreviations. That's people of color. POC is people of color. You're good with abbreviations better than I am. I'm, I'm, I'm never good with abbreviations. The only abbreviation I know is EDT and EDP. <laughs> well, in our business, that's the most important. Yes. So people of color? Well, wait, Emilio, but Chanel has different shades in different continents and countries. So it varies. Well, it all depends which area you're in. Yeah, uh, BB says, I, darling, I, I, try Nix. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What do you say? I was just saying that makes sense that perhaps like in South America, they might have some darker colors or in Africa, but why don't they have a, a broader range in the United States where we have all kinds of colors of people? The United States, you know, there's issues in the United States in general. I just yeah. saw this crazy video on Twitter, I think through Emilio, uh, of this is, this is horrible. This like soap dispenser in a, in a, in a restroom that reacts to, it has a sensor, it reacts when you put your hand underneath it and it dispenses soap, but it reacts to color. So if, you, if you're brown skinned, it doesn't react. And then like, if you put a white hand underneath, it dispenses soap. And these guys were that's, laughing. That's I thought it was tragic, but these guys, you know, they were laughing. They're like, oh, look, you know, I'm black. I put it in the hand, it doesn't work. Then he takes a white tissue paper, puts it under and the soap dispenses the soap. Shocking. How could, what that's idiot horrible. would design? That's like a what idiot that's, would design like such a, a thing? Hitler soap dispenser. It's like, it's awful. So, it is awful. I don't know. But anyway. Um, ah, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Oh, you're still the moderator, darling. You still have the little gidget. <laughs> Hi, Jacob Lanyard. And all. Happy birthday, Coco. Hi, Debbie. Debbie's Invisible Girl, 422. Uh, Rogelio Garcia de, pa uh, de Paredes. Pedro Almodovar's high heels, plenty of accessories, dresses, and others by Mademoiselle Chanel. Yes. And I told Lanyard a couple of months ago, I don't know if he did his homework, to watch High Heels by Pedro Modova. I can't find it. I cannot find it. Really? On YouTube, I'm, I can't find it. I, I'm, I'm still looking. On Amazon, I couldn't find it. It's but incredible because uh, Rebecca, the daughter, was wearing Chanel throughout the entire movie. 90s Chanel, the best Chanel. Mm -hmm. Post Coco, the best Chanel post Coco. And her mother, Marisa Paredes, is wearing Armani. So it's a really interesting juxtaposition. Uh, Melinda Cooper, our uh, peacemaker Debbie is here. Cheers, Debbie. Yes. Love is who I am. Says hello, Debbie. Um, uh, then I have to tell you, Jacob. Yeah. Jacob, I have to tell you, there's a film from the 60s uh, called Boccaccio 70. Oh, yes, Boccaccio. And, yes, I know it. You know, that, you know that film? It's four short stories. Yes. And one of them, I can't remember the director who did it, but it's... Um, Romy Schneider is the actress in that, and she wears a Chanel suit, a pink Chanel suit, and or maybe it's beige, I can't remember exactly, but anyway, she's in her dressing room or in her bedroom, and she's lying on the floor 
looking at magazines or something, and there's a big giant bottle of Chanel Number no. Five uh, Eau de Cologne. I mean, it's like, can you see my hands? It's big. I, I, it's, we can see a uh, part of your head. <laughs> about it's huge. It's, it was huge, <laughs> but it's a, it's a great movie. I mean, Sophia Loren is in it, and 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 um, Anita Ekberg, and there's a part by Fellini, and I forget who else, uh, Victoria De Sica. So it's a wonderful film. So if you haven't seen it, or if our viewers haven't seen it, they should check it out. Mm -hmm. So guys, Boccaccio seventy, check it out. That's right. Amelia remembers the soap dispenser. Love is who I am. I failed acronyms in high school. Huh. I still keep failing them. Melinda, I saw High Heels, loved it. Amazing movie. And Rogelio says, uh, it is on Apple TV, uh, Lanyard, if you want to see High Heels. Melinda Cooper oh, says, through great. Google, Lanyard. And Rogelio, Rogelio, is it Rogelio or Rogelio? Because Rogelio would be the Italian version. Rogelio would be the Spanish version of pronouncing it. I need to expunge my last name. You don't like Marisa Paredes? I love Marisa Paredes. I think it's a beautiful name. And she's an incredible actress. Rogelio Garcia de Paredes. Garcia de Paredes. Garcia. De Garcia de Paredes. Yes. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. So Growing up in Southern California, I've, known, I've, I've heard a lot of Spanish being spoken. So, As a matter of fact, growing up in Southern California, I thought all of those Spanish names were English as a little little boy because you know la sienica and and la jolla those same, that it was just part of our, our our life growing up there that i didn't know it was another language yeah la sienica oh my god I remember putting into the car into the um, uh what's it called the thing that um looks for streets for you uh, oh google maps no not google maps not google maps uh, but like when you're in the car and you have the um, oh, the gps the gps yeah. um and then she would always be, had this weird voice and she would not have pronounced anything. She would be like, La Sienega Boulevard. Yeah. I'm like, you know, what? Really, what's I, really funny is I have an iPhone and um, I use the, uh, the iPhone uh, directions, the Google directions. Yeah. And you can choose the voice you want or the language. So I have the, my, my Siri voice is an Englishman. So he's very funny yeah, of when, course. He says, <laughs> when he says a lot of these Native American names like Puyallup and uh, oh, just all the, the many strange names up here, Tukwila, uh that are from Native American languages. And when they're out of his mouth, it's hysterically funny. Make a left on Tukwila. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. When you arrive. And when you arrive at your destination, tea will be served. A tea will be served with crumpets. I had a, well, also... I would, prefer, I would prefer a Bali and Nidley thing, darling. Bali, 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 Bali. Cheers. Mm. I'm afraid we're getting very silly, Jacob. Of course we are. Ooh, tipsy is the way to go. It's a birthday party. By the way... That's right. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, sweetie. Cheers, 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 sweetie, sweetie, darling, sweetie, sweetie, darling, darling, sweetie. Is that a La Croix? Is that a La Croix glass? Is that a, is that a La Croix? If it's La Croix, if it's La Croix, if, <laughs> if it's La Croix, <laughs> if it's La Croix, we love it, darling. Only if it's La Croix. If it's I not La Croix. you and I are turning into Patsy and Adina right here before everybody. Yes, I mean, I'm definitely a Dean. I'm, I'm a Dina, totally. You're more Patsy, darling. <laughs> I'm very passy, darling. Mm. So I was go so I have this GPS talking and I wanted to go to Trader Joe's. And at a certain point it says, You have arrived to Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is this like some rodeo? <laughs> you need a lasso to enter the Trader Joe's. Oh, uh well we got we got some new messages. Um, oh. Gemma says, speaking of Italian accents, having a ball watching all your all the YouTubers trying to pronounce Moschino while reviewing Sephora by Moschino Makeup recently. Well, Gemma and Walsh, my dear, you have seen my How to Pronounce Italian Designers, have you? Because they can learn. I just had one chick, she was so sweet. The other day she commented, Dago, thank you so much. This was life-changing <laughs> to see that, that Moschino is not Moschino. Or Machino. Um, 
when I was when like, I first heard of Moschino, when I first heard of Moschino, I called it Maraschino. With an R? Like Maraschino cherries. Oh my God. <laughs> really? I can't believe it. <laughs> well, I was, I was, I was doing it in fun. So, but that was back in the eighties though. Yes, yes. Hmm. That was back in the 80s. I remember the first time I saw Gianni Versace store in San Francisco. I'm like, oh, I am in love. Golly, that was his stuff was great back in the 80s and, and the early 90s. Yes. Oh, here's a little scoop for whoever made it this long into this video. I just hunted down on the second hand Marche market um, a gorgeous Gianni Versace. Well, actually, it's more Donatella, but she used his print. Melinda's gonna be happy because she loves her silk scarves. It's a silk carré, huge, with a special print, the most saturated pink color. Well, I can't reveal too much because I'm gonna make a video on it. I can't wait for it to arrive. I hope it's not damaged or anything. So it's a secondhand uh, silk Versace print scarf on a new Donatella Versace version scarf, if that makes any sense. And that is from the old school Gianni that you love, that we all love, actually, because Gianni... I love the old school. Oh, okay. Let's throw some shade. Cheers, sweetie. Oh. <clears throat> On the new Versace movie that's being made. I have seen the images leak of... And we have some Spanish viewers here of La Mamarracha. Um, that's, that's what we call her. What's, her. what's her name? Oh, geez, I'm too drunk. Javier Bardem's uh, wife. <laughs> Penelope Cruz. Javier Bardem's wife. Javier Bardem's wife, Penelope Cruz. Um, Penelope Cruz. Yeah. Penelope Cruz. I'm sorry. Penelope Cruz. Cruz. Penelope Cruz. So she is Donatella, girl. She's Donatella? I, unfortunately, they hired her to be Donatella. And I'm like, don't tell her. <laughs> don't tell her. <laughs> Donatella became, don't tell her. Don't tell her the movie's coming out. <laughs> It's awful. Don't I, tell her Versace. Don't tell her Versace. Saki as in the Saki that we're going to drink to forget our sorrows. Uh, I really am not feeling uh, Penelope in, in as Donatella. But you guys, let us know in the comment section, in the chat section. Uh, Peter says, I'm finishing up at work, so we'll wish you all good night. Have fun, lovely. So thank you so much, Peter. You too. Ciao Auntie, for now, Peter. Ciao for now, darling. On DJ says, sweetie darling. Melinda Cooper, I love Jacob's laugh. Jacob is drunk, so, you know. No, what no, stays in the bunker? No, what happens in the bunker stays in the bunker. Stays in the bunker. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so I missed a couple of commentos. I was going to tell you, and it just slipped my mind. We're back up. Oh, I remember we were talking about how I loved uh, – the the young uh, new Gianni Versace. I remember when I first became aware of Armani, and that was when that film uh, American Gigolo came out. Oh, American and Gigolo! Richard Gere had that scene where he was picking out his outfit and he was opening drawer after drawer of beautiful shirts, Armani ties. He was laying them all on the bed, and I was like, "This is an education." Yeah. Oh my God! And then to top it all off. The most hysterical part of seeing that film was that was touted as the very first film, American film, where there was a full frontal of a, of, of a, ma a male American movie star. And Richard Gere turned around. He was in his bedroom way, 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 way far away. Like he was only three inches tall, turned around completely naked. And the theater was completely silent and you could hear every single seat in the theater squeak as everyone leaned forward. <laughs> <laughs> At Richard Gere. It was hysterical. But anyway, I fell in love Wait, with Wait, but Armani Lanya, darling, I'm sweetie. I'm still sweet, looking for old Armani. Sweetie, darling. What? Sweetie, darling. This sweetie brings darling. me to a conclusion. If yes. at Richard Gere's cheers, full frontal, everybody needed to lean in forward, I guess there wasn't much to see? They were trying well, to see it. They're like, where is it? Where did it go? Let me, <laughs> let me put it this way, Jacob. If I had my opera glasses with me, I would have raised them to my eyes to look. And she snaps. <laughs> and, po and she drops the mic. Oh, poor Richard. 
Now you got me into trouble. You got me drinking. I know, me too. What time is it? Be in the afternoon. Mm. Well, it's still Coco's birthday somewhere. So let, let's see what the messages are. I love Jacob's laugh. Oh, yeah, we already read that one. <laughs> Debbie says, so adorable. Emilio's laughing. Uh, Rogelio says, you have yet to listen to the Spanish spoken variations of Versace. I think it's Versace. 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 I don't know. Um, hello, Jacob and Lanyard. Oh, forever fragrant kid. Hello, T. How's it going, sweetie? Finally. Both Lanyard and I. Finish, wouldn't the V be a B? Ah, bers, bers, yeah, the V is a B, yes. And they also can't say W. So whiskey is guisky. So it'll be ber, bersafe. Oh my God. Bersafe. Bersafe. So I should be able to do that, but I can't. Bersafe. We are getting bersafe. tipsy. Join us. Uh, Melinda is guzzling with us. Oh, Jacob, can't wait to Cheers, see. Cheers, Melinda. Cheers, Melinda, sweetie. Cheers, Jacob Rogelio says. Oh, is Jacob a size queen? No, actually, <laughs> Jacob is a size queen when it comes to t-shirts and stuff. I love oversized t-shirts. But when it comes to the nasty department Emilio is talking about, but I'm sure Emilio was talking about t-shirts. But if he wasn't, yeah. then uh, no, actually, Jacob is not at all a size queen. I, um, I think it's the technique that matters. You know what? I have a I have an observation on that. I have to borrow. I have to um, embellish on a line from Some Like It Hot, which is it's not who's taking. It's not. It's not where you're going. It's who's taking you. Well, I would say it's not how big it is, but who's taking you. Ooh, elegante. And let me, and let me just say, I don't know if Marilyn said that in Some Like It Hot. Seems like she did, or did somebody else say it? <laughs> She did. It seems like something Billy Wilder would make her say. Yeah. But if Billy Wilder wrote that for her, was he trying to justify his lacks? His what? His lacking in. Oh, you know, that, that might be true. Because if I Billy Wilder know. made her the queen of the most gorgeous, sexy women in the world, if he made her say that, that seems to me as if he were justifying... Well, no, that's not necessarily so, because if, if you look back at another film, which is How to Marry a Millionaire, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> the train has parted, my dear. No, no, no. It, it, uh, um, she, talks, she says something about men in glasses being very, uh, very... Um, Coco's with us always. About, something about, you know... Um, some guy comes in the room and he's big and boisterous and muscular and he, he's like the center of attention. But she's always drawn to the little guy in the corner with the glasses. And so I think that maybe it's that kind of thing of having someone like Marilyn Monroe say, it's not necessarily the most uh, visually appealing guy or the guy you would expect uh, someone like her to go with, but it's the guy who is really interesting that she finds sexy and in fact in life um that proved to be true with like arthur miller well i mean but the only thing arthur miller seemed to remember about her was the fact that she loved to uh, separate her vegetables and colors <laughs> which by the way i like to do you know, too I'm, Marilyn on that one. I'm so Marilyn in that respect. I mean, I love to, if I see a plate of vegetables that is only red or only yellow, I go like, I'm missing the green. And I need to balance them out. I totally yeah, understand. Yeah, I, I totally well, understand. That's, that's, your, that's your artist's eye at work right there, right? It's the artist's eye. Yeah, your artist's eye. You're, you, you have a very artistic, um, um, way of looking at things as do I. So I think that um, this may be the martini talking, but you know, it's very important for for people like you and I to be aesthetically pleased by our surroundings and what we wear, what we surround ourselves with um, in decor and in friends. Yes. <laughs> I only 
make one of these. <laughs> no, listen, I'm guzzling. Oh my god. Ooh. Let me tell you. First of all, we have to do this. Oh no. I put back the little Oh no, we have the little gidgets back again. What gidget? Oh. You know, me <laughs> with a little kitten, me as a Yeah, I'll put me as a kitten for you. No, 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 I'll be on the floor. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, no, guys. Hello. You can't see because if I turn it around, you won't see, but it's me with a little kitten face. Hi, Lanyard. How's it going? Oh, you can't see it on YouTube. No, you can't. No, no, but fine. We're done. We're done. I'm done. I don't want to torture you. You see these little gidgets here? If I press them, I turn it into one of them. But, um, okay, guys, so listen. Okay. Let me let me touch base on one thing now that we're drunk. Um, <clears throat> pour that champagne. Melinda, you really want us to be drunk. I mean, I'm like sweating my ass. It's super hot in the bunker right now, and I'm like drunk, and that makes me sweat even more. So I almost pulled a full-on Britney uh, the other day. I actually shaved my, my hair off on my own. <laughs> you can see the results are mad. But, okay, so this is the thing. So I was like, I wanted to pull a Britney. I wanted to go all off because it's so hot and I'm so annoyed by the hair. But then I go through these like, and I think you were touching base on something like gender topic. Um, I, there's days when I wake up and I want long hair. Days when I wake up and I want short hair. And I thought, let's just try to combine the both and like do both things together. And I did both things together. So I kind of like left the top long, you see, and the side is, is short. And you see I'm sweating. So, and I, and I'm kind of happy with the result, except, I mean, you know, today's been a long day and, um, but I didn't pull a Britney all the way. Amelia says I always pull a Britney. <laughs> well, Amelia, good luck to you, you know, because Britney was lucky she had like people to block her off. Otherwise she would have fallen into that, um, category of all the stars and famous people that die by the age of 27 you know, Kurt Cobain or uh, Amy Winehouse or even Jim Morrison. Who else? A lot of them. But she survived, but it was a, it was a close call. Why is that age, why is that 27 such, a, such an incredible limit for all of these stars that have become famous so young? Why is that kind of a benchmark? Is it because they're turning almost 30 and they get some sort of pre-midlife crisis? What's, what's up with that? I think it might be a combination of that. Plus, if you've been doing drugs and alcohol for, maybe, who knows when they started, 15, 12, whatever, that maybe that is a kind of tipping point, that age. That's a long time to be involved in a lot of um, heavy-duty um, behavior. So it's also like they're not really mentally prepared for all the fame. Right, that too. I mean. Even, uh, even the most, um, you know, people who who have the equipment still struggle. Yeah. Who, what, I'm, what I mean by have the equipment is that the, the people who are really together still have a hard time with. I mean, fame. It. it but listen. Can you imagine being able to walk down the street. I mean, I remember no. when I was a kid. Yeah. And Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton were the the big thing at the time. They could not go anywhere. One person described what it was like to be with Elizabeth Taylor when she walked down the street, and she was like she was a little little boat in the ocean, and she had no idea of what was happening behind her. This great wake that her passage would create of people going nuts, you know, and not being able to having to to rent Disneyland because you couldn't go with everybody else because you'd be mobbed anyway that's super interesting to me and, and it's hard for us to understand because i mean you know we're just drinking they're famous <laughs> <laughs> put that on a t-shirt right, right. <laughs> we're just drinking they're famous it, right. we'll never know oh. um, i'm back to chanel Oh, yes. I wanted to show you something that I picked up when I was in San Francisco that I knew nothing about, and it's really, really oh, wonderful. It is this body cream called La Nuit de Chanel, and there it is. 
and it has the scent of frankincense. Have you heard of it or tried it? Yes. What do you think? I love it, but I've read really bad reviews about it. What, what do you mean bad review? What did they say? That it's a cheap product in an expensive package. It smells wonderful. I don't care if it's cheap. It smells fantastic. It smells fantastic. Yes, I know. But like, okay, for the hands, they say you could use it for your hands. Don't put it on the face. Well, that's what I, oh no, I don't use it on my face. I just use it on my hands. Oh, that's fabulous, darling. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. <laughs> I'll, uh, um, You're like Kate Moss. Guys, you know how bougie certain things are like the cream, la mer. La mer is so expensive. You're going to see all those fucked up YouTubers online that just go like, oh, you know, I'm rich. I can afford la mer. Well, guess what Kate Moss does? What? Kate Moss uses, of course, the most expensive la mer cream that is supposed to be used like just two drops on your face. She just scrubs, she rubs it all over her body. She's just like, this is my body cream. <laughs> She just like uses up like something. She uses up like three packages every night. She doesn't care, you know. I know Emilio. Emilio likes Clinique, but I'm allergic to Clinique. I can't my skin doesn't tolerate Clinique, but I know you love it and it works really good for you. Um preach Emilio fever uh, forever. I'm like fever. I'm getting drunk because I'm reading fever instead of forever. Uh, Melinda Cooper says, I hate La Mer. I mean, whatever, you know, they just shouldn't be that expensive. Uh, Debbie says, it's all made in Hoboken. You know that Hoboken, the first time I read Hoboken. Hoboken. <laughs> you know what? I would not knock Hoboken. You know what else was made in Hoboken? And that was Frank Sinatra. Oh, then the respect, respect to Mr. Blue Eyes. Was he Mr. Blue Eyes? Yeah. Yeah, old blue eyes, old blue eyes. Old blue eyes. But the I first time to... I read the stop Hoboken, I don't know why, it, in my head it's like Hobokoken. <laughs> so every time I see Hoboken, I'm like, oh, Hobokoken. That, well, it's pronunciation of words that are strange to us. Um, moving up here, a lot of the Native American uh, names are hard for me to pronounce because I'm from Southern California and Central California where it was all Spanish was easy. But up here, my family laughed at me when I said, there's a town called Yakima, but I said Yakima. <laughs> How do you say? Yakima. And they said, not Yakima, it's Yakima. But then later on, I ran into somebody who said, well, you know, that's the way the Native Americans pronounce it. They pronounce it Yakima. So anyway, who knows? Y y Yakima or Yakama? Yakama. No, that's Japanese. Yoko Kuzama. Yo yeah. Oh, shit. I forgot the name. Yakoi Kuzama. What's her name? Oh, my God. Kuzama? Yoko, Yayoi. No. Yayoi. Yayoi Kuzama. The artist oh, oh, with, the, with the polka dots. I was trying to say Yoko Ono. Oh, no. Yoko Ono. You yeah, know. Yoko Ono. Oh, she loves it. Oh. She's like, when I was a kid, it was Yoko Ono, and a lot of people say, oh, no, Yoko. Oh, no, Yoko. Oh, my God, that's nasty, though. I mean, it's not even nasty, but, you know, sometimes I try to sing, because I can't really sing, but if I can if I can sing any song, it's 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 Yoko Ono, because she just screams, you know. There was one song back in the late, nine, late 80s, early 90s, it was really beautiful. I can't remember what it was, but it was like, is that Yoko? Oh, no, that's not Yoko. <laughs> <laughs> it was Yoko. Is that Yoko? Oh no, that's not Yoko. <laughs> Jacob, one other thing I ha I have to show you this. It is so beautiful. I got it when I was in San Francisco, and it is a bath oil by Ben Halligans. Oh, Look I didn't know Ben Halligans did bath oils. Oh my God! Well, Hillary works for Ben Halligans in the. Uh, the uh, shop in downtown San Francisco, in the San Francisco Center, plug for Hillary. And uh, when I went, I spent the most money I spent anywhere in San Francisco there at Pinhaligans, and I bought this. And it is the most amazing. I use it after the bath and just put it on and rub it in. And it's this particular one is Blenheim Bouquet. They also have a... Um, a fragrance which I bought, but this is just amazing. And Be careful, Lanyard. We don't want it to end like Sophia Lauren's perfume. 
<laughs> that's right. That's right. Thank you. I'll put it down. Um, but I'll tell you that this was created um, for um, Winston Churchill. He was born and raised in Blenheim Palace in, in England. And this, oh my God, this is beautiful. Of course, it's right now mixed with Chanel number 18 and number 19. Oh, by the way. Oh. So who the hell knows what I'm smelling, but it is beautiful. I wanted to share that with you. <laughs> Who the hell knows what I'm smelling, but it's beautiful. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I got some t-shirts. Who the hell knows what I'm smelling, but it's beautiful. <laughs> but it's beautiful. After we put number 19, number 18, Ben Halligan's, and Lanyard also added something else. Oh, yes, a La Nuit de Chanel. We got four things on one hand. He don't know what he's smelling, but it's beautiful. But it's beautiful. No, but guys, I still have 18 and 19 together. It's magic. It's here. Oh, I need I need something like that too. I don't have something like that. <laughs> Number 19 box. Oh, it smells so good. But now you mixed four things together. We can't do that. I know. Well, I mix four things together with a Vesper Martini. I mean, who knows what's going to happen next? Oh, my God, guys. But let me tell you. Number 19 with number 18, Eau de Toilette. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Like one of my best friends, uh, she's from Sardinia, but she lives in New York. Hi, Betty. How you doing, sweetie, if you're watching this? She's probably not, but if she is. <laughs> so she always I does that. I can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah, like I can't. Be I, I, can't. I, I can't because I can't. Very nasal. Can't. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. <laughs> I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Yes, very elegant. Wait, so who said do it? Debbie, what do you mean do what, Debbie? Wait, let's see the comments. So. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. I've got so, many stuff, so much stuff on my desk. I've got to get rid of it. No, me too. Listen, Melinda is asking you, how do you say P-U-Y-L-U-P? How do you say what? P-U-Y-L-U-P. Pile up? Pile up. Oh, you, the town I live in? The yeah. The town I live in? I don't know. P-U-Y-L-U-P. Puyallup. Puyallup. It's the name of the Indian tribe here, or I should say American, uh, Native American tribe. We don't say Indian anymore. You don't say Indian. Uh, this, all this political correctness is killing us. I know. It's killing well, just us. Just between you and I, if, if uh, political correctness, all the great novels and films are about political incorrectness. So mm. there's something to say about that. They challenge thought. Exactly. The good things are about political incorrectness. You got to challenge everything. Otherwise, if you're just going to surrender to the routine, to the regime, to, you know, awful. And in fact, Puyallup? Puyallup. Pew, like Pew, Al, like Al Capone, and up. Puyallup. Well, guys. <clears throat> Let me add another bit of information and who has made it this far, 27 viewers, I see. Um, I can tell you that there is a video coming up soon. Well, I didn't mention in the past, but I didn't mention more details. I've been working on it for a long time because I've been waiting for some copyright clearance and because um, there will be music involved. Um, oh, wait, no, that's one video. No, there's, then there's another video after that where I will be talking about, about uh, an American... Native American, American Indian, Indian. Um, I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody, so how should I say this correctly? Native Na American. But you see, Native American is also not correct in my opinion because it was in America before Amerigo Vespucci discovered it. Right. You know what I mean? Because Native American means right. like, oh, it was America before. No, it wasn't America. Indians, no, Indian. you're right. You're they right. lived they're, there they're, before they're, it became America. It was and their there are land. Tribal names for there are very many different tribal names for for this continent. So um, maybe we should Google and find out what those what what the Native Americans refer to this continent or this land, which is theirs, uh, uh, before Europeans arrived. 
Yeah, what what was the name of the land? I don't know. Land of the people, something like that. I can't I can't remember. I've had one Vesper and that's way one way too many. Oh, Forever Fragrant Kid mixed up number 18 with 19, and she says, sitting in a cloud of number 18 and number 19. Mm. I'm telling you, T, it's incredible. The mix is beyond. Emilia says, was it America? <laughs> well, you know, I, mean, I don't know if many people know this who are watching, but I'm sure they do. They're all educated and wonderful people. But the America comes from America, Amerigo Vespucci, who was a map. Draw, drawer, drawer, draw, a map maker. <laughs> I Never finished mind. my champagne. I need more alcohol. I think I have to pass on to the sake. Sake. I am definitely not watching this when we're done because I'm going to be so embarrassed. No, you're not going to be embarrassed. You are fabulously flowing through all of the precipices of this endeavor with flying colors. Are we really? Oh, yes, we are. Okay. I mean, look, let's read the comments. Look at that. Ask Native Americans, Lucrezia says. <laughs> uh, Rogelio says, Jacob, make a drawing of your T-shirt among those interested on the live chat. How? Now? I don't have, I need a pen and a paper, you know. Um, Aunt DJ 111 says, maybe they didn't name the country. Uh, Emma Murphy, in Ireland, we learned that St. Brendan discovered the states in a small boat. I heard that. And being of Irish descent, I would be very proud of that. I love Ireland. Oh my God, Ireland. My mom worked in Ireland for a couple of years and I went to visit her from time to time. And wow, I love Irish people. They're just so heartwarming. I mean, everything like from, you know, a taxi driver who has an incredible sense of humor is never in a bad mood to just people that you meet on the street occasionally. It's amazing. I love the Irish. I would love to, wait, the Irish accent, accent. T, 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 they do the t accent. Oh, it's hard. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I could do it. I could do it if I try really hard. Ah, it is a refuge we take when the weight of the world weighs too heavily upon our tiny little heads. Well, guys, put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Oh my God! It's a kitten. This is this is Bootsy. Hey, Bootsy. Hi, Boots. Bootsy really doesn't. She doesn't like to be on camera. She likes to digging her claws in me right now. But Bootsy is it's like it. Bootsy is like not looking into the camera. Yeah, right there, Boots. No, she's done. <laughs> she's done. It's done. Well, she's Boots done. Bootsy just gave us the hootsie. <laughs> Wait, Lucrezia says, I can't believe you pronounced my name right. Girl, I got you. I got your name right. I got your name. Don't wish you were a girl. Lucrezia, 2102. Lucrezia. Lucrezia. Bader al -Swaib. Hello, Jacob. Hey, sweetie. T says, Melinda, I only have a decant. Well, it doesn't matter. It's still number 18. Uh, Melinda says, I'm half Irish. Melinda, you were half Macedonian, half American, half Irish. That's three halves. Three halves don't make a third. Yeah, that's, that's, um, Pascal says, hello, I'm just coming in here. Hello, sweetie. And Pascal is asking, are you drunk or what? Of course we're drunk. We've been drinking cocktails. I've been drinking champagne. Lanyard has been drinking a wonderful champagne cocktail, darling. Uh, the, the James Bond cocktail, the cocktail of all cocktails. Exactly. Oh, you know what? Emilio says, Bootsy means fatty in Macedonian. And I have to tell you, Bootsy is very fatty. Is Bootsy, she, is Bootsy, you got to put her on a diet. There's no way. She, she runs the, the, the house. She, I, she wakes me up at 5.30 in the morning. So that's why I go to the gym at 5.30 in the morning. Because she gets me up at 5.30 in the morning to feed her. I come back and she's like, meow, 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 feed me again. So I give her a little treat. She runs the whole place. She's wait, Ladier, Ladier, wait. So, <laughs> so wait, Bootsy says meow meow. So you have to give her a treat. <laughs> she won't shut up till I give her a treat. So it's a meow meow situation. Yeah. Oh look, Melinda yeah. says that Coco says hi yeah, to Bootsy. I'm sorry, what? 
Coco, Melinda's cat, says hi to Bootsy. Oh, hi, Coco from from Bootsy. Hey, Bootsy. Ah, uh, she's trying on shoes right now. She uh, she won't be bothered. What's Bootsy doing? She's trying on shoes right now. Pascal asked us if we're drunk. We said yes, and then she said, "Gonna take me a wine, then stay online, please." <laughs> Oh no, the battery's low. Ah, I need a, um, it's in the bedroom. It's in the bedroom. <laughs> Land your, run to the bedroom. <laughs> I see Mama Jacob. I see, I just saw her response. It's not Mama Jacob. It's, it's called you. <laughs> yes, guys, my mom is here with me. Can you believe it? She sees this outrageous video. I'm up at four in the morning because of Coco. What do you mean? Is Our, it four in the morning? Wait, wait, no, Melinda like says. Dinner? Melinda's up at four oh, in the morning. Melinda. Wait, where's Melinda? Ma Melinda's where's in the... your area. Melinda eats cherry pie from the Double R Diner. It's not four in the morning here. It's only what? Um, ah, no, I think Melinda time. says that boot, that Coco keeps her up at night because she oh. meows a lot. Oh, oh, Coco keeps her up. Boots. Boots sits on the uh, end of my bed. She sleeps there in the middle of the night. We play something called the tail, which is she'll come up next to me. She'll lie down. Um, she'll have her tail next to my hand. I'll tap a finger. Yeah. She'll flop her tail over on my hand. Aww. And I'll tap the finger, flop it back. She, she plays a, this game with me. I don't know. I've never heard of that with cats before. With this, cats. Can you do like high five with her? It's like a high five. It's like a kitty high five. I love that. I do too. That's if so you ever cute. Come to visit, if you ever come to visit, Jacob, you have to learn how to play the high five game with, with Bootsy. But, you know, cats, I'm allergic to cats. Oh, well, then never mind. But I, I do have a trick. I, I have an uh, antihistamine thing that I can take. I have one that I found that doesn't make me sleepy. And then oh, I, and then I'm good to go for at least seven hours. And but after that, I have to take another one. Otherwise, the allergy kicks in. Well, we'll keep you filled. Up. We'll keep you filled with uh, antihistamines and champagne when you come to visit. Oh my God, antihistamines and champagne. I'm dead. Oh, by the way, Pascal says so. Uh, a sunny flower, good wine. Which parfum shall I spray for the occasion? Okay, because you missed out the beginning. I have this whole theory a numerology about number 19 and number 18. And I know Pascal has a lot of Chanel's exclusives perfumes and perfumes in general. I don't know if she bought number 18, but I'm, she might have a sample. What we, what Lanyard and I did is we mixed, um, first you spray number 19 and mm, two to three sprays of Eau de Toilette or whatever you got. And then on top of that, do the Eau de Toilette of number 18. Mix them together. Incredible. Oh. oh my God. It's just beyond amazing. Beyond amazing. I think I think I got the cable. Ah yes. Thank you, Lanyard. You got the cable. Oh no, okay, so attach that to the electricity. Sorry guys. I'm trying to save Lanyard before the juice runs out. Ah. And we are I don't know. Wow, that's okay. We're back. We're charging. Yay! We saved Lanier from the precipice of energy draining situations. Um, okay, DJ Melinda asks, one asks where I live, and I live outside of Seattle in a small town called Puyallup, which is about five miles east of Tacoma and about 35 minutes south of Seattle. So I'm close enough to the city that it's, um, feasible for me to get my city fix, being an ex-San Franciscan, but it's lovely country and a beautiful small town. Very Gilmore Girls, you might say. We love the Gilmore Girls. Mom, they figured you out. They know you're here. You want to say hi? Hello. Okay, she's... <laughs> well, T says hi. Everybody says hi. Melinda says hi. Yeah. Emilio threw away his sample of number 18. Oh. Girl, we don't throw away the Les Exclusives. No, we don't. Where's the guillotine? Where's the guillotine? Um, 
Wait, mom, you, you have to say hi. T says hi, Mama Deco. Pascal says hi. Emilio says hi, mom. Lucrezia says hi. Andy just says they all say hi. Just pop up for a second. Okay, she's gonna pop up for a second. Hi, Come everybody. In. There's the shadow. And where is Wait. Don't say it, mom. She, I'm like, there's the shadow. She's like, and where is me? <laughs> Who's drunk here? She's been drinking too. Okay. Come in, come in, just slowly. Just show yourself for a second. Ah, there she is. Hi. <laughs> She's super shy, but that's that's Mama Jacob. And off she goes for a smoke. <laughs> super unhealthy. I tried to make her stop, but she just doesn't want to. Uh, listen, tell Mama that if I could stop smoking, she can too. I have been seven years tobacco free. Seven years. Uh huh. Wow. Well, she's going through the labyrinth of the bunker because she's not allowed to smoke in the bunker because there's no windows here. So it's, I'm like, you're not smoking in the bunker. All of this collection of all of these clothes shall, shaft never smelleth of tabak. <laughs> and so she respects that. Thank God it's summer now so she can go out for a smoke. But otherwise... God, winter must be hell for her. She can't go out and smoke in the winter. Winter is hell because no smoking inside the bunker. Melinda, no windows. Well, that's one of those mysteries. <laughs> that's why one of those. They call it a bunker, right? That's why they call it a bunker. That's why they call it a bunker. Talalai 99, how you doing, sweetie? I have the exact same problem with my mom smoking, but she'll probably live to be 100 anyways. <laughs> I don't think the problem is coming to 100. I think the problem is the smell of the smoke. I don't, you know, some of them, yeah. some people die of lung cancer at the age of 20 and they never smoked a cigarette in their life. Some people live 100 years and they smoke their whole lives. You never know. When it hits you, it hits you. What you gonna do? You know, when Betty Davis was very, very old, uh, Johnny Carson went to ask her why she was still smoking. She said, well, my doctor tells me now if I stop smoking, it'll kill me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Put that on a T-shirt. Another T-shirt, guys. If I stop smoking now, it will kill me. Betty Davis. <laughs> I hope her family or her estate copy, like, cop copy writ wrote it so that nobody can use it. Because that's an amazing one. It is amazing. Talalai well, makes, you know Talala makes the mom Jacob, go outside to Jacob, smoke. What? Jacob, you know I'm drunk when I'm chewing on my ice cubes. Oh my God, you're chewing. You're sucking out the leftover alcohol from the ice cubes. <laughs> it's either that or go make another cocktail. You know? Oh, cheers, sweetie. I mean, listen, the only thing I got to this point is sake. Or sake. Oh my God. Well, okay, I'll tell you what. You pour yourself a glass of sake, and I'll go make a, a half of a cocktail. Well, I can't leave our, our wonderful friends. Yeah, you, you go first, and then I'll go. <laughs> I'll go first. I'll be back in <laughs> Guys, how are you? Okay, so Lanyard, okay, let me put down this thing for a second, because Lanyard has gone to make a cocktail. How are you enjoying our celebrations for uh, Chanel's birthday until now? Are you having fun, guys? We got 32 viewers. We're all getting tipsy. And I want to know if you're having fun. If you're not even having fun, we could stop it. You know what I mean? You will be gone, Jacob and Saki. Yes, I will be gone. Uh, Jacob needs to start a t-shirt line. Oh, I actually have in one of my, um, I have one of my like notebooks where I write ideas. I have one where I just write t-shirt print names, which you know I'm still working on because I want to, I'm still working on this um, merch line, which is still not ready because, well, American Apparel kicked the bucket as a brand. And so that collaboration is down the faucet. Um, so I'm looking for other alternatives, other problems, kind of other, uh, other complications happen in between. But I want to deliver something really fun. Now, at the same time, I've given up hope on really good quality organic cottons, good tailoring, because it's impossible unless I don't sit down and kind of play the seamstress myself. But I don't have the time for that. So you got to be willing to accept the fact that the T-shirts are mass produced if you want merch from Super D. Because at this point, to like allow 
because I don't want stuff to be expensive. I want stuff to be affordable. But if you want stuff affordable nowadays, you can't really have the highest quality. So it's some, I'm torn because I want you to have the highest quality, but I don't want to rip you off. And it's like you can't get the high quality without the high prices, but I don't want high prices. A lot of my viewers are super, you know, young or still even students and like, it's not fair. I don't want to be the, the, the expensive merch person. That makes no sense, you know, but I have some fun ideas and I think it would be really cool to have, um, you know, some t-shirts or some stuff like that. That is, um, just fun but it ain't going to be like the highest quality so you got to tell me what you think about that you know what i mean like it's always a compromise you can't have it all oh lanya is back guys okay okay versailles, I live in versailles you know versailles of the uh of the city northwest and it's so big i had to go all the way down to the basement my kitchen to get it now, uh, now i can't get it open Class of Saki, it's over there because I, I can't stand up because I would have to put lanyard down and then it's it's on the top somewhere. <laughs> it's hidden. Wait. Okay, walk, 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 walk. Yeah, it's a, it's in a brown bottle. It says sake on it. What else? Melinda says I would pay more for your T-shirt. Yeah, Melinda, but I don't want you to pay more for my T-shirt. Are you kidding me? Like you're you're one of the people that like loves me the most. You're always here. You're commenting always. You're sharing the love. You're you you know what I mean. Like I how can I ask money of people that that love me? It's, I'm just you see that's why I'm never gonna be a businessman. I think you found the bottle, but don't give me the vinegar. I hate the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> the stream is lagging. I'm not sure if it's my connection. Oh well, it's shots. But yeah, you can give me the big one. <laughs> <laughs> Saki is for okay. This is just to show you guys. Wait, give me just a second. Like this is my mom with the Saki. This is so funny. So this is a Saki. We have a lot. You should actually warm it up. But I can drink cold. And she's like, "Is this an okay glass for it?" <laughs> Saki is supposed to be served in little shot glasses. Oh, whatever. Yeah. The shot the shot glasses are the little black glass things that I bought from the 70s. I found them on the flea market. You know those little black things? Oh, could you give me one of those? They're amazing. Yeah, they In one of the cupboards. Oof. Okay, guys. So I went to the flea market many moons ago. Wait, let me, let me pick up Lanyard. Here we go. Oh, no. Lanyard, I'll call you back in a minute. I'm crying. <laughs> Look at me. I have to. Can you hear me? I still see you. I know, but I can't take this off, so I have to like call you again in order for it to start. <laughs> wait, wait. Let me let me call you again. This is a mess. <laughs> and you're. Wait, wait, wait. I'll call you in a second. No, the little black glass ones. The little black glass ones. I can't. Wait, is that working? <laughs> Wait, give me a second. I'll call you in a minute. Okay. They're glass. They're little flutes, little tubular black glasses. Okay, we're calling back now. Oh, no, Lanyard. No, no, Lanyard is going to be back in a second. And the phone is ringing. And the camera is on. And there you are. Yes. Listen, I have to give you an update. Ah, oh, we're oh done. Wait, let me give me just a second. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Update. Update. This number nineteen and number eighteen. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. And I promise I didn't get any of the uh, of the um, of the Chanel body cream here. So beautiful! Oh my God! I'm the only thing on the screen. Yes, because you were you were giving us the update, so it was important. 
<laughs> it, it's really beautiful, Dacon. Just gorgeous. I'm going to be wearing this to Anthem on Monday. And it's super special. And guys, only the 34 of you that have been watching till now know this secret. So keep it a secret. Don't just spread it out. Number 18 and 19 mixed together. Numerology, it gives us the number one. It gives us the beginning. It gives us the initiation. It gives us birth. 18 and 19 combined together are magical. Wear it only on special occasions because it's very, very powerful. I'm just going to drink from the big glass at this point because we have issues with finding the little ones. No, I don't, I don't want that. Um, but thank you. It's like super easy. It's on like on the second shelf inside the cupboard and they're like black and little. Tubular black things hidden in the back. I love what your mother is wearing. I love what Mama Jacob is wearing. I can see her. Yeah, you're the only one who can see her though. Nobody else. It's, it's all a secret. But yeah, I'm telling you, the bunker is a big mystery. But at the same time, it's very simple. Like all big mysteries, it's always very, very, it's like Edgar Allan Poe would say, you want to hide something, put it in plain sight. That's right. You want to hide it, put it in plain sight. Jacob, I meant to ask you, um, what are you wearing? Like in general or today? Well, it, it, today, that beautiful red top, what is that? Well, this is Vivian Westwood. It's uh, her, it's organic cotton from Peru. This cotton, oh, we found it. Okay, let me talk to the thing. Thank you, perfect. Uh, so this is from her Climate Revolution range. She basically believes that if our climate were to go up five degrees, in the meantime, it's four we will be in an irreversible state of no return. Global warming and everything right. is going to mess up our lives. We're all going to perish. We're all doomed. So this is one of her statement shirts that she creates uh, with her very, you know, 70s vision. She's a very slogan-oriented lady. She loves, um, she loves her slogans. She was raised in the 70s. She's a kid of the 70s that works through slogans. So this is kind of her... It says climate on one side, revolution on the other. It's just two pieces of, it's like a scarf. It's like two pieces of square cut cotton st stitched together to create a square t-shirt. And I have a lot of these in all sorts of colors with different prints. And, uh, but yeah, so that, that's Vivian Westwood. I'm wearing Vivian today and a Vivian uh, necklace, little silver thing. What about you, my dear, the polo shirt? Um, this is a Ralph Lauren polo. Um, I'm wearing uh, black um, Levi's. Very simple, very, you know, understated. Very me. I love the black. purple, though. The purple right. is so regal. You know what I mean? Well, it's my favorite color. That is my favorite color. But you say I wear all black or all white. I do like to wear a black and white striped top a lot, a la Coco Chanel with black uh, jeans. Um, I keep my silhouette very simple, very um, uh, uh, kind of uh, sleek and slender as I can. And um, I like uh, wearing cardigans. And um, I really would love to buy some really beautiful things by uh, designers, but can't afford it right now. But we'll see what happens. I mean, so I try to I try to infuse my everyday look with something that is classic, if that makes any sense. Um, and I often try to put some kind of Chanel sensibility into the into what I wear, uh, be it with either with color or you know with the, the basic great colors of Chanel like black or white or beige. Um, so that's kind of what I try to do on a budget. But that's that that's what makes sense. I mean, again, you know. 
it's hard if we're talking about luxury and it's Chanel's birthday and we're talking about perfumes and we're mixing all these like first world products like Chanel number 18 with, you know, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it's the love we have for these objects. You don't have to own them necessarily. You know, it's about understanding them. And understanding it's them is actually more than owning the them. Concept. You know what I mean by that? Channeling the concept of taking something from a designer and making it work within within what you have or what what you can buy. Um, it's making your own personal style, in a sense. Um, what, did, what did Chanel say about personal style? Something to the effect that, that um, I don't remember. Do you remember? Well, Coco was full of herself. She said, the style is me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she was like, okay, guys, look what, what I, I do together, and copy that. What I throw together creates my personal style, which is me. So I, I can relate to that. Right, Coco? Yes, I'm sure she, she agrees with you. She's like, I don't know her. You know, she had a very smoky voice. And, I mean, I could play. I have my, where is it? I have her, actually. I always take her with me in my little gidgets. And I have a couple of interviews with her. But, I mean, for copyright reasons, we can't really show or, or play her voice. But um, she had a very smoky, very deep, like, rough kind of, you know, husky voice. I've seen I've seen some interviews towards the end of her life where she spoke was speaking in French. And yes, you're right. She did have a very smoky kind of, um, well, she smoked forever. Forever. So that, and probably drank too. So that, that definitely does something to your vocal cords. So she had this like deep husky voice and, you know, it, but she was so firm in, in her kind of the way she would talk that it would be just so... I love listening to her, no matter what language she's speaking. And she could speak English fluently. Let's not forget one oh, of her yeah. most important, most of her most important lovers were English or British. Yes, yes. Boy, and what was the other one? Westminster? What was his name? I can't remember. Yes, the Duke of Westminster. Duke of Westminster, yes. See, I read that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all did. Some I of us, several times. Listen, I have a really interesting story for you about Coco Chanel that I, I may have shared in my videos, but I'm going to share it with you now because I think you really get a kick out of it. And that is there is an American designer who is touted as, as being the only American designer who has a couture fashion house in Paris, and her name is Vicky Teal, and she is often um, credited probably by herself as being the inventor of the mini skirt and of the wrap dress, which is content in contention with um, Diane von Furstenberg and um, was it Mary Quant who says she invented the, the mini skirt? Anyway, she tells a wonderful story and I have to tell you this story. I did a review. Oh no, I did a, um, a um, little kind of essay on my uh, blog since memory of, uh, written blog that I have on WordPress called ET and Me, which was about my experience in, in life over my entire life with Elizabeth Taylor. And I did this, um, this uh, piece and she somehow got a hold of it and read it. And she wrote to me and gave me her phone number and had me call her. So I called her and she was best friends with Elizabeth Taylor and was in business with her for years and years. Uh, Elizabeth, um, subsidized her her her, um, her um, design company in Paris, which was uh, 21 Rue Bonaparte, which is the address of her of her atelier. Anyway, she told me this story that when she first met Elizabeth, that Elizabeth knew that Coco Chanel was her heroine, that she grew up loving Coco Chanel, and she was her inspiration to become a designer. So Elizabeth arranged in the about 1964, 65, somewhere around there, a meeting, a dinner uh, at uh, a hotel in Paris that Elizabeth was staying in, was probably the Ritz, I'm not sure, but she invited uh, Vicky Teal to dinner. Vicky arrived, Elizabeth opened the door and ushered her in, and there was Coco Chanel sitting on the couch, and it was 
she got to meet her idol. So they spent a wonderful evening together having dinner. Wow. And towards the end of the evening, Coco Chanel took each of their hands and said, ladies, in English, she was speaking in English to them. She said, I want to tell you something. Elizabeth, your film career will not last forever. And Vicky, you may not be always a successful uh, dress designer. The secret and the money and the future for both of you is in perfume. You should both start your own for perfume companies. So in the late uh, 80s, Elizabeth started hers. And in the early 90s, Vicky Teal started hers. And Vicky told me this story. And it was so sweet and so wonderful that she shared that with me. And so I want to share that with you, the generosity of Coco Chanel. And it's something to talk about on her birthday because there's a lot of negative stuff about Coco out there. But I'd like to share this beautiful gift that she gave to two great icons in fashion and film. Thank you so much, Lanier. That is so, so beautiful. And I didn't know that she actually gave that tip to, in particular, to Elizabeth Taylor. And I mean, Elizabeth, with passion and diamonds and white diamonds, you know, I'm not so fond of the formulations of today, but the original 80s formulation of passion oh, to die for. Oh, yes, that is beautiful. And white diamonds, when it first came out, was gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. And you can also uh, read about uh, on that story, ET and me, on my blog, about how when uh, I got to meet, not necessarily meet, but see Elizabeth Taylor in person, she came to Macy's when I was working there. I was in, upstairs on the eighth floor working in the collection department. And she came to, to launch Passion. And um, they gave uh, everyone in the area opportunity. You could pay $200 and have tea with her in the employee, uh, in the employee cafeteria and have tea with her and meet her, et cetera, et cetera. And my credit card at the time was at max out so I couldn't do it plus I worked there couldn't get the time off so I knew she was coming well the day she arrived uh about 15 minutes before she arrived everything went black I blacked out the next thing I knew I I came to I was on the first floor standing right near the stage and here she was coming on stage and she was beautiful in completely in purple and took a question from the audience that was so funny and warm and sweet. And at one point she turned, I didn't ask any questions and I didn't talk about my experience with her or how I did the painting for her in Burton and took it down to Puerto Vallarta and missed him by a day. But um, I didn't want to be that guy who goes, oh, you may not remember me, but so I just simply listened. But at one point she turned, she smiled at me and she winked. And that was everything. So um, at uh, I was only going to be down there for 10 minutes. I was there for an hour. So when I went back upstairs, my boss was standing by the door, tapping her foot, and she said, well, I understand. But listen, when Cher comes, you can't do that. <laughs> and, of course, you did that when Cher came. <laughs> no, I didn't. I kept, I kept my word. But I did sneak down to see Catherine Neuf, which was wow. And you saw God. Sophia Loren. Oh, Sophia Loren was before I worked at Macy's. That was in the early 80s or late 80s. I was working in a flag factory. I was the artist for a company that did flags of all countries and states and whatnot. And um, she came to town and I got permission to go to that. So that was not a problem. Wow, that's amazing. Guys, this is, I mean, are you, do you understand how incredible it is that we got to hear these stories? Do, do you guys understand? I'm sure they do. They're going to write in a second. <laughs> they were going to get the... Because this, to me... I don't know. To me, this is what life is all about. It's, it, it's <laughs> getting to know this. Getting to understand this. Getting to share this. Getting to feel like we're a part of something bigger. You know, it's so rare nowadays with this fast society... Everything is just bam, 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 bam. I mean, never anybody does anybody ever give you a chance to really listen, to really go deeper underneath the surface of something and understand. It's so rare. It's so rare. And 
and you know we're living in times where from something as superficial as you know fragrances where the opening notes are given all the importance because no perfume store wants thinks that you're going to spend your 40 minutes to one hour time to let a perfume develop on your skin so they don't care about the base notes anymore they don't give them the time they don't invest the money anymore to develop the base notes which really shows if a perfume is good or bad so it's the top notes that has to sell the fragrance it's the quick news that have to sell the political situation it's you know the the quick made trailer that showcases all of the highlighted scenes of a movie that has to sell the movie once you go to see the movie you're like wow actually the only good scenes that i've seen were in the trailer <laughs> not in the movie <laughs> <laughs> and here we have a chance to be with Lanier and to actually hear and I you know this is don't get me wrong you know, some people are gonna be like oh this is an age issue no it's not this is not an age situation or issue we're just lucky to be able to talk to somebody who has met icons <laughs> freaking icons and nowadays we don't really have those icons anymore who's left of the designers Vivian Westwood I would agree. I would say that she's one of those last living legends. Yes. You know, Christian Lacroix, he's not working anymore. Thierry Mugler sold the company. As far as um, uh, politics are concerned, it's tragic. We can just, I could just sit here and cry. Um, as far as art is concerned, <laughs> we have Jeff Koons, uh, artist uh, du jour, considered the most famous artist at the moment, making a crappy collaboration with Louis Vuitton. So take that, you know, with a pinch of salt and pepper and pepper spray if you may uh you know like no matter where we look we are lacking substance we are lacking that substance and it's critical yeah you are absolutely right so right the the culture has become completely mcdonaldized <laughs> the culture has become McDonaldized. That's like put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> culture has become McDonaldized. Quote by Lanier Smith from Sense <laughs> Memory. And okay, but let's let's see let's read what my, what our friends are saying here. Emilio says Jeff Kunz meh. Aunt DJ one hundred eleven. Story time is wonderful. I want to hear about Catherine De, Catherine Deneuve. Uh, Forever Fragrant Kid says, yes, I totally agree. Melinda, time stands still with you guys. Aw. Talalai99 says, oh, very so sweet. Oh, yes. I have to, I have to meet Melinda. This, we have to have to make this happen. Melinda and you live pretty close to one another, and you have to meet her. She is a treasure, a national Absolutely. and international treasure. Um, oh, Aunt DJ, again, I want to hear about her, Catherine Deneuve. Well, on DJ 111, actually, Lanier made a video on, uh, well, not directly about Catherine Deneuve, but Catherine Deneuve was mentioned. Can you tell us about well, the video? I, it was her perfume. I did a review of her perfume, Catherine Deneuve, which, hold on, I'll get the bottle and show you. It's so incredibly beautiful. Emma Murphy says they would all be lucky to meet Lanier. We would all be lucky to meet Lanier, yes. This is a bottle of Catherine Deneuve. Isn't that a gorgeous bottle? Look at that. Oh, wow. This came out um, in the 80s, probably 80. Let's see. I left in I left Macy's in 1991. So this is probably 88, 89, somewhere around there. I did a review on my YouTube channel. This is a gorgeous perfume. And to answer the question about what she was like, she came to Macy's. I, I sat down for a little bit. And I have to tell you that I have never seen skin so beautiful on a white woman as I saw on her. It, it was just lum luminescent. And this incredible blonde hair. And she was so charming and sweet. And I remember walking to the side to just watch her. She was signing uh, boxes of her perfume and talking to people, sitting at a small desk. It wasn't like when Elizabeth Taylor came and she was on a stage. This was just sitting at a small desk meeting people. And I remember looking at her profile and saying, oh my goodness, she and, and Princess Grace, Grace Kelly, have the exact same profile. 
and the exact kind of same beautiful skin and glowing glow, glowiness about them. She simply glowed. Uh, she was an incredibly beautiful and is still an incredibly beautiful woman. So that that is my uh, impression of when I got to see Catherine Deneuve in person. Darn that broad or that last is she was so you know lucky also because you you got to be born with certain type of skin as well. It's oh. not. She had a sister, a sister who was in films. Um, uh, what was her name? Dorliac. Um, I can't remember her first name. Who died tragically in an accident? But Catherine got all of the looks. Uh, her sister was was pretty, but Catherine, Catherine Deneuve has a a an elegance that is uh, unsurpassed. She was actually uh, for many many years the uh, ideal of the French Republic, and she was the face of Marianne, who is the, the um, uh, kind of the Lady Liberty of France. And um, I have to say that if, if you can, any of you out there can watch the film, uh, uh, I can't say, I, I've had too much to drink, uh, The Umbrellas of Cherbourg, I can't say it in French. Ah, Le, le, para, le Parapluie de Chabrol. Something like that. See, we, you, that's the one. Uh, and also, um, it's a gorgeous a movie called Mayerling, which with um, Ava Gardner and um, um, uh, Omar Sharif, which is about the tragic uh, uh, story of uh, a prince of Austria who, well, you have to look at Mayerling. That's wonderful. Many, many, many films. Indochine. Um, what is, I have one up here. Oh, this one is wonderful. I don't, I'm not sure I can see it. Uh, Poutiche? Look, there it is. Uh, With Gérard so Depardieu? Can you see that? Lift it a little it's bit a higher. Wonderful. Oh no, I have to lift it higher. Yes, Poutiche. Wonderful comedy. I can't, Poutiche, which means trophy wife. Also, there's an American film she made called April Fools with Jack Lemmon, which is wonderful, but it's much better in her French films than in her American films. And also, this is a wonderful film by Louis Bunuel called Tristana. Wonderful, wonderful film. Anyway, Catherine Deneuve, I love her. Wow, that's so beautiful. And you know what is what is so fascinating? I mean, it's this what brought us all together now is Coco Chanel. It's her birthday, and right. and even and even when whatever topic we touch on or whatever topic we touched on today, guys, it all brought us back to Chanel. And even if we talk about Catherine Deneuve, it brings us back to Chanel because Chanel perfumes. You know, Catherine Deneuve yes. was the face of Chanel Number no. Five yes. for many many years. Yes. And Chanel in the late seventies and eighties, she was she was the face of of Chanel. Wonderful, wonderful commercials that you can find on YouTube of her talking about Chanel Number no. Five and which just look them up on YouTube. They're amazing. Oh, um, yeah, love love Catherine Deneuve. She's amazing, very elegant lady, and you know, connected to Coco as 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 then as Madonna would say, look it up. <laughs> As Madonna would say, what? Madonna would say, as you know, she's always bitchy about things. So, like, if, you know, she's like, you just said, like, Catherine Deneuve is on, is on YouTube. Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. Yeah, she's very, like, meh. But, she um. She just had a birthday, didn't she? 59? Who? Madonna. Yes, Madonna's birthday was on the 16th, I think. On the 16th. Yeah, it's on uh, the She's 59 now? She's 59 or, yeah, she's heading towards 60. I remember when she first popped under the scene. Golly, time sure flies. Time flies. Madge has been around for a day and a half. And also, again, Chanel, uh, when Lagerfeld um, started working for Chanel, and, uh, you know, he actually said that for, Ch for the late 80s Chanel collections he was directly inspired by madonna all the crosses and all that kind of overly done you know like a virgin yeah. stuff he used that to create all of his crosses collection uh for, for chanel and then if we if we look at truth or dare her movie about the blonde ambition tour on the road 
uh, documentary, she goes to the Chanel boutique in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, and they kind of seal her off in a specially sealed off room where just VIPs can go. And uh, she's uh, looking at all the costume jewelry from Chanel and she's wearing the clothes. Her dancers are dressed in Chanel from head to toe. It's all filmed in beautiful black and white. And then at one point, like, she's just acting up typical Madonna in her late twenties. You know, she was like super flamboyant. She's like, Oh, the phone is ringing. And she goes to get the phone. And then she's like acting up like she's Chanel. But at the same time, she's like saying, Oh, Chanel ties on the phone. And she's saying, you better get your shit together. You know, it was super funny. So you see Chanel comes back, no matter how you try, no matter what we do, Coco is always there with us. And you know, Jacob, the thing about Coco Chanel is she, people, Young people today may not realize this, but she completely changed the way we look at fashion, the way we look at women. She changed so much in our lives. She is so prevalent and invasive and part of our lives today because of what she did over a hundred years ago. I know, it's incredible, timeless. I mean, guys, <laughs> look at this bag. You Would you say this is from 1955? Or would you say it's from the future? Is it future now, or is it past? <laughs> My Twin Peaks is not what I'm talking about. Is everything is from now, whether it was made in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s, and 60s. It is now. She's modern, completely modern. It's incredible. I have no words. I mean, every time I see her classics, I, I really don't know what to say. <laughs> I really don't know what to say. And actually, I have another video. I do know what to say. There's another video coming out. Um, I've, I've prepared and edited another review of the Chanel 255 reissue bag. In particular, it's chains and the busy mystery of the chains. So look for that coming out very soon to conclude our Chanel uh, birthday party, basically. But, you know, it, it'll come out in a couple of days. I'm not so sure when it's coming out, but it, it is coming out soon. Anyway, let's let's I, we have to finish it off, Lanier, because it's like it's been super long. Yeah, we do. Uh, Atlan, yeah. hi Atlan, sweetie, how you doing? Atlan joined us as well. Uh, fragrant, um, forever fragrant kid says, ha ha. Wood, wood. Milena says, yay, fire girls here represent. <laughs> okay, this is like uh, uh, the horoscope signs. Madonna looks incredible. Melinda says, Emilio says, Madonna turned twenty a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Pascal asks us, what would be a scent to wear now to honor Coco Chanel? Don't know how to write it. Um, I would say number 19. Ah, but she doesn't have number 19. Number 19. If you don't have right. number 19, then wear number five. For sure. Right. For sure. Right. Right. Or what would you say, Lanier? I would say number 19 and number five. 19 because today is her birthday. Number five because it's the iconic fragrance. The The... The beginning of modern, modern fragrance and and the I don't know I don't know it's the essence of Chanel. It is five. and the the um, ilang ilang and the dry down of the pure parfum is what makes this essence captivating, dangerously magical, dangerously magical. That's the word, dangerously magical. Dangerously magical. And guys, I'm going to end it that here. That would be a great t-shirt. Dangerously magical, number five. But I want to end it with one last comment. And the last comment is by Joey Thomas. He says, we are so lucky to hear Lanier's stories. And I could not find a better way to end this video. Thank you so much for that, Joey. Guys, we love you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to this birthday bash. It. We are so honored to have had you all come join the party and celebrate with us. We hope to have more collaboration videos in the future. You never know. Absolutely. And hopefully in the future, we're going to figure out how to do the video in video without me kind of holding Lanyer like a Tamagotchi. <laughs> and uh, feed, me, feed, me. feed me, feed me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here, here. Number 19. I'm feeding you, Lanyer. <laughs> There you go. We fed our Lanyer. So, guys, I love you so much. We all love you so much. Lanyer, one last time, where can we find you on 
uh, internet everywhere? You can find me on WordPress at sensememory.com, and you can find me on YouTube at uh, Lanyer Smith, and you can find me on Instagram. Uh, I think it's MGM Kid, MGM Stars, MGM something. Wait, but let me check. Let me I check. No, no, wait, wait, wait. No, we got to do this right. You got to check out Lanyer on Instagram and his yeah, profile on Instagram. the day, every day. Wait, his profile. Yeah, he posts every day. Um, where are you? And of course, now that I'm looking for you, I'm having difficulty. Well, I'm looking. I'm looking too. Let me find me real quick. Let me find me really. <laughs> Instagram, and I. Am okay. Oh my God. Yes, it's them. Actually, it's the MGM kid. DMGM kid. Okay, wait. Let me. No, you can't see. How are we gonna? There's see? a story behind that too, but I'll tell it another time. So it's the Metro Goldwyn Mayer kid. It's the MGM kid, right? Am I correct that it's the abbreviation of the Metro Goldwyn Mayer? And yeah, that's right. There's a story behind that, which I will tell it another time. Yeah, the MGM kid. There I am. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching us. We love you very much, and we shall see you soon somewhere in the bunker <laughs> or in Lanyard's sense memory bunker, too. Bye, guys.